So I was watching an interview with Bill Hudgens uh, by Ed Joffe on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. And uh, he said that for a while he played an Alexander Paris mouthpiece. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I've never heard of that. Where can I find one? I hope it plays well. And I found a couple on eBay for cheap, much to my surprise. And with the original facing, plays great. Great. are a little difficult on it, but that facing is probably a hundred mm, hundred years old, maybe a hundred ten years old, um, with a modern reed, blue box. So, and I find blue boxes work best on original facing mouthpieces, um, French mouthpieces. So, so who was Alexander Selmer? So, in 1909, he was principal of the New York Phil. Um, and in 1911, he moved back to Paris to help his brother, Henri, with the family business. And um, he was succeeded by a man named Henri Leroy, who uh, took over the Robert factory. So there's a link there between Selmer and Shedvel. Um, what's really interesting is most uh, Henri Selmer mouthpieces from the period and earlier and after and even today don't really work that great with with reeds most of them need to be refaced in fact i've never played an original facing Henri selmer mouthpiece that i can play like that that really that really works and i just want to show you um uh same reed this is an m13 this is one of the best m13s i've played in comparison that whole beautiful ringing sound is, uh, even though this is a very comfortable mouthpiece and I can push it to get more ring to get more sound, it's not really there. I get so much more, uh, more substance, so much more character, so much more um, projection. Um, and it's about the same uh, exact tip opening as the M13, 1.00 millimeter. And that's rare to find because most uh, mouthpieces from the period uh, were more open. So, um, so what he, he had a student, George M. Bundy. Yes, that Bundy, who took over the company uh, in the late 20s. Um, but there was, a, there was a, a, a name dispute because Alexander couldn't put Selmer... Uh, on his own mouthpiece brand and his own instruments. He had his own instruments as well um, uh, because of probably legal reasons with his brother Henri Selmer. Um, but it's interesting because the more, at least to my knowledge, the more uh, famous Selmer in the United States was Alexander having played in the New York Philharmonic uh, right before Mahler got there. So, um, and no doubt we hear to this day Alexander's legacy in clarinet sound. Um, I, I listen to that and I hear a lot of, I, I hear more in common with a great Shedvel, a great Henri Shedvel like Harold Wright, than I do a lot of the best Henri Selmer mouthpieces, uh, table series, and those are great mouthpieces too when they're refaced correctly. So this is the rare instance where I can recommend, uh, and because I've tried many and they're all about the same uh, tip opening, um, 
I can recommend a, a vintage mouthpiece from over 100 years ago that, that works well to modern standards uh, with modern reeds in an orchestra. Um, very rare, very, 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 very rare. And they can, you can find them for very, very, very cheap. Um, and that's even more rare. Uh, the blank, one last thing I want to I say, so people talk about the relationship of Selmer and, and Shedvel. This blank is a patent process uh, blank, very similar to an early Woodwind Co. And Woodwind Co. was founded by a, name, a man named Eugene Bersou, who founded the Woodwind Company, and Mellophone, and a couple others. So there is absolutely a link there between Selmer, one of the Selmers, and Shedvel, or at least possibly Shedvel's mentor. We don't really know too terribly much about Eugene Bersou. He's a lost uh, uh, name in history, much like how Alexander Selmer is a lost name. So if you find one, I can't promise it'll be amazing, but if you like a close-facing mouthpiece, if you like uh, um, you know, the sound of Harold Wright or Ralph McLean, you're probably really going to like one of these pieces.